which is really uh, very much in line with uh, open source. And I've seen at previous conferences the iteration of this work, which again is very much with open source. So I'll pass it over to the, the speaking team. Welcome to Bellmere Sessions. Uh, I am Lee Byung Chang from USC ISI. Uh, this Bellmere open source project is being worked by USC ISI, NTT Docomo, Virtual Tech Japan. First of all, uh, I'm going to introduce overview of general Bellmere provisioning framework, including why Bellmere provisioning, open tech, bare metal history and bare metal provisioning framework and release plan. After that, NTT Docomo will present more technical stuff for bare metal provisioning support work. Okay, the OpenStack cloud of, uh, operating system enables service providers to offer on-demand computing resources with provisioning and managing a large network of virtual machines. That virtualization plays an important role in Nova to support agility and flexibility. But um, there is a, a significant panel of performance penalty for res response time and emphasis on live servers compared to bare metal servers. And also some non x86 based machine architectures have either poor or non existent system support of virtualization. And also some users want to use bare metal machine itself without virtualization uh, using open source. So to support real time analysis with low overhead and to support various safety type and also to support uh, bare metal resources itself without virtualization. Instead, we have to focus on general bare metal provisioning framework. There is a big difference between bare metal and virtual machine. Uh, in case of a virtual machine, there is a hypervised uh, disk between physical resources and virtual machine. But in case of virtual machine, there is no hypervisor. So bare metal machine can access physical resources freely. So it needs to achieve same safety level as virtual environment. Also, in case of virtual machine, one Nova compute is dedicated for one physical machine. So many virtualized instances can be running on that system. However, in case of bare metal system, one Nova compute node should be dedicated for multiple bare metal machines. So Nova compute node should aggregate multiple, res multiple bare metal resources. And then those paperwork information should be sent to the scheduler. Then based on that aggregated paperwork information, Nova scheduler schedules bare metal instances to, to the bare metal Nova compute node. In uh, Nova upstream port point of view, ISI start initiated general bare metal framework but at that time, uh, ISI targeted one system type of HPC cloud uh, that is non PC Sierra merge for bare metal machines. After that, uh, from, Wholesome, uh, uh, from the last Wholesome Design Summit, ISI and NTT Docomo started to collaborate to extend ASTEC uh, bare metal provisioning for supporting PC and also. Uh, independent bare metal MySQL database. So, uh, in the ASTEC and wholesome release, uh, a 
only Pilera non Pixie motion in which Pavidin was considered. So Pilera uh, uh, system put Pavidin Pilera bare narrow motion using PFT or NFSY system and using uh, PDU power distribution and power management system. That's it. So finally, in grizzly version, uh, to support pixie or non-pixie motion, and also PDU uh, to support PDU and IPN, IPNI scheme, we organized the general bare metal framework as shown in the slide. So first of all, compute driver should be set as bare metal driver, right, reverse driver. And also bare metal driver can be set as or non pixie motion. Also, power manager should be set as IPMI or PDU. Also, using instance type extra spec, CPU type also can be set as x86 64, ARM, PI64, and so on. Based on the parameter hypervisor type and also CPU type, Doba scheduler schedules uh, parameter instances to Loba, uh, bare metal Loba compute node. And also, each Loba compute node should uh, manage uh, one homogeneous CPU farm, bare metal farm. So, like Pix Pixie x86 64 bare metal farm, Pixie arm farm, or non Pixie Pilera bare metal farm. Also, in SSEC and Fulsome release, uh, to avoid touching Loba mainstream code at all, uh, we were using the only simple text file describing bare metal load instance. And also, those homogeneous capability information is sent by Loba compute node. Then, this schedule was changed in release ver uh, Grizzly version. Uh, in Grizzly version, this text file replaced by dependent bare metal bicycle database that's separated from main Loba database. And also, homogeneous capability information is being changed by bulk capability information. But scheduler point of view to change multiple capability information Loba scheduler side and Loba compute side should be changed a lot. So uh, it's being discussed between those two, those two methods, bulk capability information or homogeneous capability information. It will be determined in the in tomorrow summit session. So we are targeting for Grizzly merging. Uh, including bare metal driver with pixie and non pixie stuff, and bare metal bicycle database, and bare metal uh, deployment management script and management script, and also bare metal scheduler side uh, by Grizzly first version. Uh, so, if that merge is smoothly proceeded, the next target will be. Fault tolerance issue and security enhancement better isolation and also scalability by Grizzly first red line. So that's all I have and then Ken will present more technical stuff. Thank you, Michelle. So before going to the presentation, let me introduce our team. Uh, my name is Ken Garas from NTT Docomo, and I'm leading a open stack project in NTT Docomo. And uh, myself and uh, Arata are the main, uh, one of the contributors for bare metal provisioning, especially for x86. And uh, today, there is a uh, hero and uh, <laughs> 
and they are working for uh, Javix and open source in integration. And uh, she will show uh, some demos during the presentation. So as uh, Ikyo has already mentioned, one motivation of the project is a performance improvement. We uh, actually we have a uh, virtualization because we can get the agility and the flexibility easily, but still we need to pay some penal uh, performance penalty compared to uh, their methods. For example, uh, context switch and throughput and delay, still there is a huge gap compared to uh, their method. And uh, we know uh, if we can use a hardware accelerator like SRI, SRIOB, then the performance will be improved, but then we lose uh, like flexibility of virtualization. Like, um, like we cannot do migration, and we also need to install driver to the guest operating system. So finally, we decided just use a uh, bare metal now. So before go into the detail, uh, let's review uh, current uh, VM provisioning procedure in Novus. Uh, first, a user requests an instance, and once the request reaches the Nova scheduler, then the Nova scheduler chooses appropriate Nova compute uh, based on uh, instance type, and then the instance is provisioning one of the Nova compute. And if user wants, we can create a, a network uh, among dependencies. Also, if you want, you can attach a Nova volume to one of VMs. And finally, uh, you get uh, access to the VM through SSH or VNC. And also, uh, if you want, you can create new machine image from the running instances. So uh, here is a necessary function uh, we, we need a bare metal provisioning must support. Uh, so we must support those seven functions, but the challenge is there is no hypervisor. So in general, uh, in bare metal provisioning, we need to uh, achieve all those functions without using hypervisor. This is the challenge of the project. Okay. Okay, for the instance request and the scheduler, since EQ has already mentioned, so I'm I explain detail about the image provisioning in X86. So first, we need a preparation. Uh, for the preparation phase, first we need to create a kernel and RAM disk. For that purpose, we provide a, sorry, we, we provide a bare metal MK initial RD script, and using this script, you can create a kernel and RAM disk for just for de deployment. And you need to register those to the grant. And second, you need to run uh, several servers on top of Nova Compute. First one is a PXP server, and another is a VM deployment server. Also, this is provided by Docomo. And third, you need to configure Nova Comp. And this first line, you need to indicate the Nova Computer, a uh, Nova Compute acts as a bare metal provisioning server. Also, we specify we use a PXP for the deployment and IPMI for the uh, power management turns on and turn off uh, bare metal machines. And those two are the specified the kernel and the RAM disk for the deployment. Those are created in this phase. Okay. And uh, this is the first proof. Since uh, our bare metal provisioning framework support exact same API as Nova Compute has, a uh, user can use ucastle or Nova Compute command to create a bare metal instance. And once the instance request reaches to the Nova scheduler, then the Nova scheduler choose, chooses the best uh, 
a metal machine which uh, host the input. And then the Nova, uh, the Nova compute turns on the bare metal machine through ITMI. And uh, using TXT boot, the kernel and uh, RAM disk for the deployment are uh, downloaded. And uh, in the second step, using the kernel and RAM disk, we can download machine image uh, via iSCSI and create a file system. And also the RAM disk reads the network configuration from a novel compute and configure the MAC and IP address of the bare metal machine. And finally, we uh, set up a TXT for the second boot and just reboot the bare metal machine. Okay. Uh, this is the second boot. In the second boot, you can use uh, your own kernel and RAM disk, which specifies through a uh, UCA command, Nova command. And uh, during the second boot, the kernel and uh, RAM disk are downloaded. And uh, once those are downloaded to the bare metal machine, then it uh, boots from the local disk. And the bare metal machine becomes a bare metal instance. That's it. So this is the provisioning. And uh, this is about the network isolation. So uh, in virtual machine environment, there is a hypervisor and a VLAN is created under hypervisor. But case for a bare metal environment, there is no hypervisor. So it means a user can change MAC and IP address if he wants. And also, user can change VLAN type as well. So we need to provide uh, some uh, prevent mechanism against the malicious user not to harm other users network. So currently, uh, this is the function we support. Currently, we use a uh, quantum, uh, especially NEC Coleman and open source it's plugin. And uh, by using this quantum API, we put two kind of filter rule, one for uh, protect against uh, address spoofing and another for create a private network among instances. And uh, by using these functions, I think we can provide exact same uh, network isolation level as Nova network provides. OK, third one is about uh, Nova volume attachment. And uh, this is uh, also in bare metal environment, there is no hypervisor. So if you to iSCSI discovery, then you can see all the Nova volume, and you can attach any volume you want. So we also need some mechanism to protect against this. So solution is quite similar to network isolation. So now uh, we are using open source kit, and using open source kit, we isolate the iSCSI network, and also we use a TAP for the HR. And uh, BNC access. For the BNC access, we are simply using a serial over RAM. And using a serial over RAM, you can access to the bare metal node through a web console like this. So uh, those are functions we uh, implemented. And uh, from the horizon point of view, those are uh, supported instructions. And uh, currently, we don't support uh, suspend uh, because uh, if we do suspend for the server, then there is many issue for the region. So still, we need to spend the time for the investigation. And uh, also, a snapshot is not supported. And uh, for this, uh, we are still discussing to find the best way to achieve this function. And for the console, uh, we cannot support, we haven't supported a BNC yet, but uh, we do support a, a serial overlap. So it's 
hand over the presentation to Mana and she will show some demonstration. Thanks, Ken. Hi, I'm Mana from NTT Tokomo. I will show you two demonstrations. One for our implemented function in the parameter problem framework, and another for autoscaling of a compute using Zabbix. Now, the first. demonstration, I will show you four functions, launch a diameter instance, network isolation, attach a volume, and web control. So first, launch a diameter instance. Launch a diameter instance using horizon. We are collecting a diameter sleeper. And select PPL and launch. So when the diameter instance is active activated, first boot process will begin. First, diameter instance runs with deployment mode and gets AMI DI schedule to local hard disk. And then switch DXD to instance mode and then reboot. So, and in the second boot, it runs with instance mode and boot from local hard disk and next associate IP to the instance and we can access to SSH IS country and check IP address. And next, I will show you network isolation. Each very there are two users. Each user has one diameter and one VM, and each network has already isolated using OpenFrame switch. user one broadcast the packet from virtual machine and you can see packet only reach user one's diameter machine and next user two broadcast from diameter machine and also, you can see packet only reach user to the uh, virtual machine. Next, I, I will show you volume attachment. First, creating volume. And attach it to the instance. Through the diameter instance control consoles, we do iSchedule discovery. And we do iSchedule login. 
and next create a partition file system and make file system and make directory mount and set file and you can see you can create a file so next web console we can access the console through a web browser by serial overrun in this browser we can execute all commands for example vi about scaling the Nova compute using Gavik. One of the bare metal machine provisioning, uh, one of the benefits of bare metal machine provisioning is we can manage bare metal machines same as virtual machine. So we can utilize all the ecosystem create created on top of op open stack like auto scaling and also using this we can manage open stack by open stack in this demonstration we change resources dynamically based on workload from common computing tools so there are Nova Compute cluster and Gavik cluster. For example, if the Nova, Nova cluster's workload is going up, we can take nodes from Gavik cluster and allocate them to Nova cluster. Next, I will explain how does Gavik scale up Nova Compute. We have integrated CorexD to Gavik and we can get total vCPU assigned to VM and total physical core. In this demo demonstration, we use those two items and we define wizard init action based of item. So this slide show details of triggers and actions. In scale out, this expression is met. In scale out, this is executed. And also scale in if the this ex expression is met, the scale in this is ex executed. Now the demonstration. three discrete Ryzen and Gavik Gavik Bixi and Linux Lite and in Gavik display red line shows total CPUs and green line shows total vCPUs This is the list of Nova Compute. Now, just one Nova Compute is active, and Gavik 
this ratio total physical CPU is 4. Next line. And then and then launch 5 VM. When launch a VM, unknown timing saver is used. So each VM has one base CPU. Look up graphic display. You can see total vCPU is going up the green line. Okay. So now the total vCPU is over the physical CPU. So the scale out script is executed by graphic. compute is launched. And go back to the list of instances, launch more one more VM. As you can see this this graph, the moving ship is provisioned to the new Nova compute. And next, we termina terminate 4 VM. scale in script is ex executed by graphic and one one nova compute that has no vm is shutted down that's it thank you <laughs> ah no 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 <laughs> sorry <laughs> for her presentation and uh, still uh, there are a couple of slides <laughs> Where did you go? Okay, so just two. So I think the second present uh, second demonstration is very important. Uh, I know uh, there are tons of mm -hmm. tools that can support uh, bare metal provisioning, but uh, one of the advantage of ours is. Ours is, uh, has a fully compatibility with Nova Compute. So um, if Nova Compute support not only auto scaling, but also like the failover, then you can use uh, those functions uh, for the bare metal. So, uh, so th that, that is, me, I, I think, the most advantage of our and uh, those uh, uh, lists we uh, submitted. Unfortunately, uh, not much read, but uh, those are uh, code lists we submitted. And uh, also, uh, we provide a detailed document on the website. And also, uh, ISI's code and document code are get merged and you can download the latest code from the GitHub. And uh, today we have uh, many uh, many people uh, giving us uh, feedback or advices. And uh, if you want to join the project, please come uh, tomorrow's technical session held at 4.30 and time to start collaboration. Can? Any questions?
questions yeah so this is just uh, cu currently we need to register manually for the database and we need to uh, we need to uh, connect a nova compute and a bare metal machine and in, in the future uh, we plan to use a chef for the discovery and we do all the connection automatically using the chef discovery mechanism okay. I, I see I see uh, the first sixty bit is just only used for deployment and uh, I think uh, you, are, you are asking about uh, 60 bit for the second bit. Right, right, right. So if you are okay to use a deployment kernel for the boot, you don't need to use uh, your own kernel on Lambda. Just do a uh, one pixel boot and change the boot, that's it. But some if some user if some user wants to use your own RAM disk and kernel, which has already supported in Nova, then we need this kind of second uh, boot, second pixel boot. In the second pixel boot, we use a uh, user uh, kernel and RAM disk. This is not the uh, RAM disk and the kernel for the deployment. So we can replace the kernel and the RAM disk completely from the fa first boot. For the first boot, we just use uh, deployment uh, <coughs> kernel and RAM disk. That's it. I see, I see. I, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, it, okay, okay, okay. So, the question is uh, why we need a second boot to uh, load uh, this kernel and uh, RAM disk? Because, uh, it is very difficult to set up a grab or some boot loader. <laughs> that is the only reason. So that, that, that's why this is more easy. It, it's very complicated to set up a grab, grab something. So that, that's why we are just using a second pixel boot. Am I bugged? Uh, support today and uh, not confirmed but uh, I I think all of the machine image should work all the machine image should work but not tested we just tested uh, like one to two machine image but it should work questions That's it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. That was a great, very technical presentation, well delivered with those uh, demos. It's uh, almost 6 o'clock. Marantis's party is uh, very close at Roy's restaurant or diner or something like that. Roy's something. All right. <laughs>